Chapter 11 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The man translated by Addis of Exiled Rebels Scanlations DeWitt was still worried about what would happen to him when he came in with the little fox in his arms. Now, however, the little fellow didn't let go of the energy stone in his paws. Even under the guidance of the female doctor, he rolled over obediently to cooperate with the examination and DeWitt's eyes were a little irate. It's not looking at you. Archie, who stood beside him, felt it was rare to see him like this and deliberately stimulated him. DeWitt's face remained unchanged. Is this year's physical examination over? With these words, Archie's expression of joy and gloating was wiped away at once, and then he began to suffer bitterly. Yeah, what qualifications did he have to laugh at the little fox? The little fox sticks so tightly to DeWitt that it can be checked as it plays with a small energy stone. Sightsai's habit of running away from home had not changed, and the waves were endless. Getting him to take an annual physical examination was the number one problem as he never did it with cooperation. Looking at that cute little fox, Archie gritted his teeth and stared at the bird standing on the windowsill with his head tilted. Archie went out of the room angrily, and DeWitt followed him straight away. He did not look at Wenjin anymore. He felt that he would be overwhelmed. But his leaving was caught by a little one who thought he left for a completely different reason. When Jean patted his paws angrily on the inspection box. His fur was bristling with his unhappiness. He held his stone in his arms and thought that this should be the kind of emotion those in operas sang about. Wasn't this the so dot called resentment from a person who did not turn back and never appeared again? What were they called? Slag man. Yeah, slag man. When the other doctors saw the situation, their eyes also showed understanding. When they received the invitation, they thought that the marshal cared about this beast. Young beasts were always sensitive to the temperament of others, especially strangers, but the marshal did not even say a word of comfort to accompany him for the examination. Sure enough, he did not even say a word of encouragement. Even if it is a contract, the beast was still young. The marshal didn't care about it at all. The turnaround of his health was mostly due to the contract beast in front of them. Does it seem to like energy stones? A young veterinarian from the veterinary team looked curiously at the soft white fox lying on the water bed, feeling that the little fellow was still very bright. Just now, he was making a lot of noise and refused to have an examination. Yes, said Anna, the female doctor who started the examination, looking at the data in her hand, reaching out to touch the little fox with great satisfaction. She was not angry when she was dodged. She looked down and curved her eyes in a smile. I'll go and get two more for you to play with. Be good. When Jean didn't understand but thought the woman's laughter was pretty lovely, so he flicked his tail and stared at Anna with black eyes. Now and then he sniffed and stared at Anna with a dull look, which made the latter laugh. Someone frowned and said, come on, it's just a beast. Is Anna going to get more energy stones so that it can play with them for fun? It's the Marshal's beast, Cohen. I'm showing it the correct attitude. Anna's casual voice came from inside. She sighed as others did not value the beast. There were too few people who wanted to do this, and there were many people with different kinds of good and bad attitude. Is it the Marshal's contract beast? Judging by the Marshal's impatient appearance earlier, and that he didn't even look at it before he left, he doesn't seem to care about it at all. The man named Cohen scoffed at Anna's statement and looked at Wen Jean with disgust. But then again, such a weak beast to bond with the marshal. It has the good luck of eight lifetimes. DeWitt was absent and, without a translator, Wen Jean could not understand their conversation. He was absorbed in the gloomy green stone in his hand, and his heart was thrilled. All worlds had some spiritual stones on them, and when Jean could feel that such a small spiritual stone had quite the capacity. Before its energy was used up, the capacity of the stone should not be too small. The same stone could accumulate dozens if not hundreds of spiritual strands that could let him increase his mana. Then, maybe, 
he could finally try to open his magic artifact. Thinking of this, Wen Jin's eyes flashed with a ray of light, as if he saw the hope of remedying his demon Dan. He wagged his tail, stuck out his tender tongue, and licked his nose. An abacus flashed through his head. The length of time he needed to open the artifact was based on how much Reiki he had. Besides, he needed a lot of energy to repair his body. He didn't know how much energy he had exchanged for the silly big one that left him behind. How many Lingxia would he need? When Jean conscientiously began to think about this problem and at the same time, Kai Kai, who was standing at the door from the very beginning, started staring at him. Of course, when Jean was aware of it. At first, he didn't take it seriously. When he was bored with it, he could not help looking at the bird. When the bird first came, he was busy fighting with DeWitt, and they didn't look at each other very well. However, when Jean, who looked at it, couldn't help laughing and shivering on the mat, which made the researchers around him feel very strange. Only the purple bird understood that he was laughing at and gave a strong condemnation in his eyes. Chirp. Yes, it was a bird with purple plumage, but it had a lot of colorful fake feathers. It was full of the smell of Archie and most importantly. He had pink fur on both sides of his face. It was authentic pink. Don't mention how funny it looked. When Jean could hardly understand Archie's obsession with the color of the bird's feathers. To make it look like this, he had to name it Kai Kai, colorful. When Jean could not help congratulating himself on this. Fortunately, DeWitt didn't advocate giving him any confusing names, even if he didn't recognize them, he would be heartbroken to listen. With his paws, he pulled the stone into his arms. When Jean wagged his tail. He wanted to know where the stone came from and how to get more. Although he could not communicate with the people here, there was a bird in front of him. Although a little ugly, looking at its age, it should be quite old. Would it know a lot about it? When Jean thought, squinting and staring at Kai Kai, Chi. Chi. Silly bird, do you know this kind of spiritual stone? Chirp and chirp. However, the purple bird ignored him and began to scream. Chi. Don't be silly. I know you understand. When Jean said, then Anna came back. Did they have a good chat? Anna laughed. She had taken out several new spiritual stones, one of which was full of energy. Most importantly, that one that was full of energy was a water spiritual stone. When Jean was most familiar with its gentle aura. In the past, this kind of Reiki was more or less found in a top-grade Reiki stone. Moreover, in this world of rare Reiki, sensing the energy contained in it made the fox's eyes shine. When Jean stopped scolding the bird in an instant, turned his head, and stared at the stone in her hand with black eyes. The little expression made Anna laugh. You like these little stones? Chi. The innocent little white fox's tail flicked. As a fox demon, when Jean very shamelessly enjoyed the benefits of his mang. However, such a scene, made the purple bird ridicule him, chirp. Silly fox. When Jean pretended not to hear and continued to stare at the spiritual stone. The spiritual stone was much more important to him than the ugly purple bird next to him. Anna, did you come out with a full fifth dot order energy stone? Even a water base. It's too luxurious. Cohen stared at the blue stone with a gleam of avarice and a frown. It seemed that he was not used to Anna's style. Only this one has been found from the water system. I grabbed all five colors together to see what color it likes. Besides, Anna looked at the little fox with straight eyes. Didn't you see it? It likes the energy stone of the water system very much. Anna said while putting all the stones beside Wen Jean. Sure enough, as she said that, Wen Jean quickly took the water lingshir from beside her and it seemed like he could not let it go. The energy stone of the fifth dot order water system is so precious. Cohen seemed very disgusted with Anna's remarks, but he could only put aside his complaints and curse in his heart. The quiet room made the inspection quicker. 
In about an hour, when Jin's entire examination was completed. Anna took the report and handed it to DeWitt, who came into the room on time, but. It was Archie who took the sheet. Because DeWitt, who finished his series of examinations, did not stay in the room for any extra moment. He was competing with Wen Jin. To be exact, Wen Jin stuck his belly tightly to the examination box and refused to let DeWitt pick him up. When he left him in this room, he was so decisive that he didn't look back. Now he wanted to run and hug him again. Dumb man, big fool. When Jean growled and pushed away DeWitt's hand with his paws. Once he pushed it, DeWitt's face became ugly. It's fast. Archie looked at the angry little fox and laughed at DeWitt inexplicably. He found that he was the only one who could respond to Anna now. Yes, this little fellow is quite good. After we gave him the energy stone, he cooperated with the examination very well. He's astute. Anna laughed. And we found that among all the energy stones, the most favorite one should be the water system energy stones, but we don't know if it's because he can feel the energy inside. Looking at the stone under the little fox's white furry paw, DeWitt, who had been resisted, heard this sentence and asked dimly, Do you like this stone? Chi. Yes, I do. What's wrong? I'll buy it for you. DeWitt said, Can we go back? What does this fellow think of him? Do you think you can cheat him out of this bright stone? Chi. By ten first. Looking at the little greedy look in the black eyes of the white fox, although he couldn't understand the other side's whining, DeWitt seemed to imagine that the other side was holding up his small chest to express a lot of meaning and immediately felt itchy, yes. Chi. White dot haired claws rested very uncompromisingly on DeWitt's hand. The latter immediately took the little fellow into his arms and touched the little fellow's round head without pause for a second. After rubbing it several times, the face of eternal facial paralysis showed a trace of unconscious satisfaction. After witnessing the interaction between man and beast, they saw a faint expression on the marshal, who was known for his fierce, iron-blooded looks. Suddenly, people felt that the world had become a bit magical. Especially Cohen, his face was red, and he wanted to hide in a cave. The author has something to say. DeWitt. I haven't touched my baby's fur for one hour, 40.6 minutes and 7 seconds, miss him. Archie. I don't know anybody here. Anna. Cohen, what's wrong with your eyes? Chapter 12 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Kindly grabbing the fox's paw translated by Addis of Exiled Rebels Scanlations it turned out that DeWitt was a trustworthy man. The next morning, just waking up from his sleep, when Jean saw a bag of lingshire, all of them water energy. Chi. Early in the morning, when Jean received a huge surprise. He was so happy that he jumped up and wanted to pounce his paws on the bag, which was more significant than his body. In an instant, he jumped, DeWitt raised his hand slightly, and the little fox was flung into the air before falling on the bed carelessly. But when Jean didn't mind, he got up quickly and wanted to take a second dive. This time, DeWitt simply reached out and picked up the whole fox. At the same time, he turned over and lay down in bed. When Jean was somewhat shaky by such a big gesture, he was too small. Even though DeWitt stretched out his hand to hold his lower body, he subconsciously approached DeWitt's body, lowered his center of gravity a little and shrank into a small ball. After standing firm, he continued to reach out to pick the soul stone out of the bag. After being obstructed by the other party again, he was somewhat unhappy. Chi. What do you want, promised now and wished to repent it. So you like it. DeWitt reached for the tip of Wen Jin's nose. Wen Jin's nose was still very sensitive. He couldn't help shaking when DeWitt touched it. He went cross that eyed as he stared at the finger touching his nose. The sound of the door being opened in the room made Wen Jin turn his head subconsciously, but he found that he seemed to have twisted in the wrong direction. There was no door where he could see. Eh. 
No, when Jean opened his eyes wider, only to realize later that this was no longer the room where he slept last night. Noticing the confusion in Wen Jin's eyes, DeWitt touched his head and said, slow reaction. Chi. Wen Jin immediately turned his head and made a fierce look at him. The man who came in was Archie. He was delighted. You have a good relationship. You quarrel when you get up in the morning. Who had a good relationship with him? When Jean tried to jump off DeWitt while chirping and chittering, but was blocked by the latter's hand, which smashed his grand ambitions of distinguishing dividing borders. A clear dividing line lit. The river that divided Chu and Han, idiom meaning a line slash border that divides rival territories, blocking one Jean, DeWitt gave Archie a light look, the latter shrugged his shoulders, yesterday. Hey, DeWitt, when are you going to name the kid? Call it at will. DeWitt pushed him gently, and when Jean fell on him, staring fiercely at him. The former squinted at him and reached out to touch his belly. When Jin's fur shook instantly. He was comfortably lying on his back and turned into a boneless fox as he stretched out his claws satisfactorily and pulled the sack of spiritual stones in front of him. That's very dull. It's just a quarrel. Archie joked, but after two days of experience, he felt no surprise. After watching the little white fox, he found a stool before sitting down. Little Bone, was it frightening yesterday? What strange names! When Jean thought to himself that it was impossible to expect people from different worlds to have any resonance with him. In fact, DeWitt or Archie, both names were strange, and neither of them sounded good to him. So he turned over, pointed his butt at Archie, and wagged his tail as if he didn't want to pay attention to him. Archie didn't really mind either. He squinted and continued to laugh. How about I let Kai Kai play with you? After that, when Jean did not respond, DeWitt said, why doesn't he get up until lunch? There's always something special with him. As Archie's voice fell, DeWitt heard a succession of horse birds chirps outside the door. Looking at it, he found that the door had not been closed when Archie came in. The next second, the purple bird appeared in panic at the door. Dot Archie smiled but did not move. Close the door. Kai Kai, who was about to fly to Archie, chirped in the air then turned back and stepped on the key of the door with his claws. Then he ran into Archie's arms and rubbed his hands with his head. When Jean was curious. When he heard the chirp, he couldn't help opening his eyes curiously and then secretly twisted his little head. It turned out that Archie was holding the fake bird in his hand. Wasn't that the ugly purple bird he saw yesterday? The purple bird with panicked eyes and the two pink fluffs flushing red on his face. When Jean realized later that the two pink fluffs were probably not fake. People's natural beauty was just like that. This made when Jean, who pretended to be very cold, suddenly laugh. When Kai Kai got up in the morning and found his bird feathers stripped, he rushed out dimly to find his master. As soon as he looked around, he saw a little one nestled in a bed, a small fox with bright, ridiculing eyes. Chirp. Chirp. I feel betrayed. Why do I look like I'm the only one who can see what's really going on? The purple bird complained and went into Archie's arms. When Jean was in high spirits, stood up and clapped his paws violently on DeWitt's abdominal muscles. He was fierce. Chi. Ugly bird. Very nice, quarrel as soon as you meet, DeWitt said, stretching out his hand and rubbing the little fox on his lap. Can't they be friends? Archie helplessly put his hand on the purple bird and stroked the feathers along the back of his neck. The bird finally calmed down. Yes, calm. The kid put on a killing face as if he had found his enemy. He did not drill into Archie's arms but stood on his shoulder bravely and protectively then chirped warmly and provocatively at Wen Jean. Wen Jean felt that the bird was boring besides his colorful plumage and didn't want to talk to him. At the other end, DeWitt took out an energy stone, a tiny fire energy stone. At the moment he took it out, Archie's face flashed with a trace of surprise. 
Well, do you like it? DeWitt took Wen Jin's claws off of the bag of water lingshir, making him touch the fire lingshir. Wen Jin usually resisted DeWitt touching his paw, but this time, he did not, and his eyes fell firmly on the small stone. Wen Jin's black beady eyes, like bright stars, stared for a while, as he was thinking that this was a good item. This stone, though much smaller than each of the spiritual stones in the big bag that DeWitt carried, was ten thousand times better than those in the bag. The stones in the big bag, including the spiritual stones he took from the doctor yesterday, were low quality. In other words, those stones were actually only saving stones. They can be used as a single absorption of the Reiki. Once exhausted and used up, the stone was useless. But this little stone was different. This was not an ordinary spiritual stone. In the past, it would probably be a treasure for the race of people who are not good at absorbing the Reiki of heaven and earth. It did not extinguish after its Reiki was absorbed. It could revolve around and create Reiki itself, causing a small spiritual cycle. The Reiki absorbed by a single breath was horrible from what he saw in this world. If he had this spiritual stone, let it rest for a while, it would create new Reiki by itself. Wen Jin certainly would not even take a second look at it in his original world, but in this sparse spiritual world, such a gadget would be extremely useful. If it was a water system, he would have everything he wanted. It was unfortunate, Wen Jin thought, pressing the stone with his paw and pushing it towards DeWitt. No, Chi. No, it's no use, maybe he can use a wood system, but the fire system was not really suitable for him. It was more ideal for DeWitt. The stone was surrounded by DeWitt's aura, showing this guy wore it all year round. The moment he took it out, Archie's eyes widened in surprise. Do you think it's too small or it doesn't like it? DeWitt asked persistently. When Jean narrowed his eyes and understood DeWitt's temptation. He didn't want to be too smart. If DeWitt was a vicious man, it would be no good to be too smart before he recovered. In the past, he wasn't a bad man. Besides, he was surrounded by a bright circle of Reiki. And suppose DeWitt knew his needs and got a lot of lingshir, then his demon Dan would recover quickly, which was imminent. It was no big deal afterward to give him some of his own medicine as a remuneration. Anyway, there were so many problems coming from this guy, and there's the contract. Even if they didn't do anything now, they couldn't dissolve their contract unilaterally. Letting the person in front of him get a large number of spiritual stones was obviously much faster, and if he relied on his own words. When Jean looked down at his little claws. Chi. The decision was made in his mind. When Jean cried, then pushed the stone forward. After pushing it, he even clapped DeWitt's hand with his claws. Then he clasped the bag of water lingshir beside him and pulled it in his own direction. Archie gave a sigh of surprise. DeWitt did not respond and deliberately pushed the stone in Archie's direction. When Jean looked at him and smashed his mouth in disgust. He thought he was too big to understand, didn't he? Was it really troublesome to be silly, or do you take such a treasure without knowing it? So he whined twice, clapped the small fire stone dot hard, clapped DeWitt's hand again and pulled Archie's hand away with his paws. DeWitt's eyes moved, grabbed the little fox's paw kindly and gently pinched it in the palm of his hand. Give me this and give you that bag. Chi. That's right, but can you keep your hands from touching? The author has something to say. Wen Jin. From today on, this bipedal animal is mine. Did you hear it? DeWitt. Hmm. Wen Jin, approaching. I said. From today on, you are mine. Are you silly? DeWitt. Yes. Hashtag grasp every opportunity to embrace hashtag. Chapter 13 You are listening at novelfull.audio. Is it a girl? Translated by Addis of Exiled Rebels Scanlations, it can even distinguish this. When Archie was sure that he understood when Jin's meaning, he was completely shocked. Understanding the human language can also be explained as the reason for the bond, 
but identifying the energy stone. An accident. In Archie's memory, there had never been a chi beast that could distinguish between energy stones, not to mention that they couldn't sense which kind of ability stones matched each human. Although the ability users couldn't do without energy stones, Assyria has been researching the energy stone for hundreds of years before gradually improving to the chain of today. In fact, researchers themselves could not recognize the types of energy perfectly. This had significantly hindered their efforts and made the production of energy stones even harder. It had been a long process to analyze the molecules matching each energy stone with the ability users to achieve fine extraction. However, even if the SODOT called industrial chain had accumulated over the past 100 years, there were still many blank spots. The enormous risks brought by incorrect energy inhalation made those with abilities be careful when choosing a lingshir, and they continued to pray for the development of the energy stone industry. But now, there was a fox beast, in the absence of any prompt, able to identify a variety of energy stones at a glance. If it was true, then the ability of the beast, if the researchers ever caught wind of it, would be snatched by those high-dot-level ability users. Again, Archie couldn't help feeling that if the ability of the little fox was real, then his friend might have really hit the jackpot this time. Did it just feel what you were thinking? Archie hesitated for a moment, but could not help asking. DeWitt was also somewhat surprised by Wen Jin's performance but shook his head. No, the effect of the contract should be mutual. It knows I need fire, but I don't know about his love for water.Energy stones. How could you possibly know that? You are so foolish. When Jean licked his paw, heard the words, slanted an eye at DeWitt and found that the other side was staring at him with a straight eye. The eyes were too straight, and when Jean was a little uncomfortable so he couldn't help slapping his paw over them. DeWitt subconsciously avoided, but he knew the little fellow had depth perception, he didn't move much, so some wet claws fell on his lips. When Jean was stunned by the unusually soft touch under his claws. Then he seemed to think of something. His sharp ears could not help shrinking back and retracting his claws like an electric shock had traced through him. He quickly ran to the end of the bed, pointed his buttocks in the direction of DeWitt again, and buried his head in the bedsheets. DeWitt looked at his movements, and his eyes narrowed. Archie had seen Wen Jin's surprise and was still immersed in his own surprise over the revelation of the energy stones. If it really has this ability, it would be terrific. I would like, after going back, if he could do it for Kai Kai. Chirp. The purple bird, who had been watching all the time quietly, suddenly gave a loud cry, which was full of resistance. You know, during your annual check dot up, I'll get Uncle Chen to do it. Archie sighed and touched the bird's head with his hand. The shadows of when Kai Kai was a child have not disappeared until now. Even Chen Bo's annual examination is only reluctantly accepted. It was meant to remind you to be cautious when looking for a veterinarian. It's better to be fixed. Before you find one, I can ask Chen Bo for help, but now it seems that that will not work. After that, it would be better for Professor Lin to have a look. When Jin's head, which was buried in the bedsheets, was a little hot, especially on both sides of his cheeks and he kept rubbing his paws on the bed. The warm and soft feeling lingered on his paws, which made Wen Jin feel a little annoyed. But after hearing Archie's words, he couldn't help but try to ignore them. However, he heard the key points and furtively erected his gossiping ears, chittering, Chi. Who was shadowed as a child? Did the bird get beaten by the doctor because it was too ugly? Chirp. Chirp. You fart. The purple bird heard well and roared angrily at once. Chi. You fart, gods don't fart. When Jean twisted his body violently, darted forward, stretched his paw and scratched it in the air. Seeing the two interacting, followed by a sudden surprise, Archie smiled. Kai Kai was lonely, with everyone always busy, it was rare to meet a friend. Quarreling was one of the ways to breed feelings. DeWitt reached out and grabbed the little fox in his arms. His fingers touched the soft white hair of the latter, 
pretending not to feel the sudden stiffness of the fox's back. Archie's eyes shook, and he said sadly, in the future when you look for a veterinarian for the little fox, you must be careful. After that, he couldn't help turning back and rubbing Tsai's head with a little guilt on his face. I know. At that time, DeWitt also hurt a little, but Archie did not want him to intervene. Although he respected the ideals of his friends, he had investigated the veterinary team that had hurt him so much in private. Even DeWitt was uncomfortable with the report submitted by his subordinates. DeWitt did not like the cruelty of bullying. At first, he thought he had understood Archie's mood sufficiently, but he did not know until now that he had understood less than one in ten thousand. Looking at the gossipy fox who was pretending to pick up the energy stone on his belly, but was actually holding up his ears to eavesdrop on him, DeWitt was angry at the thought of what could happen to it in the future. If one day, the little fox was caught and tortured, his claws broken, then thrown in front of him almost breathless. This scene was too much to think about it, and DeWitt could not ponder on it any longer. He wished he could pick up those people and break each bone in their bodies until they died. They both fell into their bad memories. Only when Jean heard them talk for half a day without knowing what had happened. He ground his paws uncomfortably and felt that the group was really disgusting. They said half of the gossip and half of it was hidden, so he could hang in the unknown. You have a good rest. Later, I'll have the food delivered. Here's a snack for bones. Three days later, Hanjia will arrive at Capital Star. Archie sat down for a while and drew blood for DeWitt. That's what he came here for originally. Remember to arrange it. Yes, DeWitt responded, pulling down the sleeve on his arm. Take another puff in two hours, don't forget. Archie shook out a small pipe in his hand and reminded DeWitt as he passed it over. After the door was closed, the room fell into a moment of silence. When Jean looked doubtfully at the place where Archie left, he remembered that there was a small tube of blood in his hand. Although it was not a lot, he was curious about why the big fool bled for others. According to Archie, he would have to let it happen again later. Are you crazy? How many times do you want to drain it? When he was injured, he was afraid of losing blood. What's more, the weak and unfit people wanted to bleed to death and drag themselves into the water. When Jean could not help putting his paw on DeWitt, serious with his small face, Chi. What do you have to do with that man? Don't let him draw your blood like that. DeWitt had been observing the fox from the very beginning and noticed that the little fellow was staring in the direction of Archie. Now he could barely understand what when Jean meant. This was to ask why my blood was drawn. The corners of his lips raised in an imperceptible curvature. DeWitt turned when Jean over and let him lie on his body with his belly facing upward. Then he reached out and touched the fur on his lower abdomen. Such a move, of course, was strongly resisted by Wen Jean, who kept twisting his body, swaying up a fight, occasionally deliberately grasping DeWitt with his claws, chittering in pieces. It was just that the young fox's claws were neither hard nor sharp and he didn't really want to scratch him, so they didn't hurt DeWitt's skin at all. After several fruitless struggles, when Jean looked at him angrily. At this time, DeWitt added slowly, not much was taken. They take blood samples then study the blood. Che ee. -e. I don't want to listen. Let me, I kindly remind you, this will go against you in the future. Who cares about you, ah? However, before when Jean finished whining, DeWitt suddenly grabbed his lower legs, which were meat compared with his upper limbs, pulled the whole fox into himself and then put his hand over when Jin's head and looked at him with an inquiring eye. When Jean, lying with his four feet still, looked up at him and hit him with an angry claw. Chi. Let go, too much, and I will condemn you. Little fellow. DeWitt said earnestly, am I wrong? Chi. Wrong, big mistake. And it will make you regret later, let you know that I am not easy to provoke. When Jean shook his teeth fiercely at DeWitt and waved his paws with great magnificence. You. DeWitt did not understand what he meant, 
and his eyes fell down on the unusually pink hair in the middle of Won Jin's lower limbs. Are you really a girl? The author has something to say. Won Jin. Am I a girl if I haven't triple X? DeWitt. I'll test it now. Won Jin. Don't call yourself the Iron Dot Blooded Marshal, change your name to Perverted Fairy. Chapter 14 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shameful Fluffy Fox translated by Addis of Exiled Rebel Scanlations, Chi. You are a girl. Your family is all girls. Will you talk well and touch with your hands? When Jean was furious, the suspicion that he was a girl was actually common. In the past, when he was traveling in human form, he often met people who could not distinguish the sex of the fox. He was used to it, but the problem was this person likes to touch him everywhere. One claw slapped DeWitt's hand hard. This time, when Jean slipped three white claws directly into DeWitt's hand. Then he turned over and jumped forward two steps. He raised his lower body high, pressed his forelegs down, turned his head, bared his teeth fiercely and grunted impatiently in his throat. He stared at DeWitt unhappily. Chi. I am too indulgent with you. Now you're so lawless and next time, I will certainly scratch your face. DeWitt, a newcomer to the emotional expression of Chi beasts, obviously couldn't understand what this little fellow meant by raising his butt to him, or was he still trying to be touched? Looking at the three white claw marks on his hands, DeWitt silently retracted the idea. You really don't like being touched. DeWitt came to a conclusion after retracting his hand. This little fellow caused troubles for so long, but it was the first time that he had done any substantial harm. Although the minor injuries were not serious, DeWitt clearly felt resistance from the other side. Chi. You don't think before you touch. Can anyone touch my underside? Do you know what respect is and what the difference is for a male? What if I touch your bits too? After half a day's humming and brainstorming, when Jean angrily scratched his paws on the quilt, pricking and tingling, making his scalp tingle. DeWitt, however, only thought that he was agreeing with what he had just said and did not think much about it. No one had gone against the scale. It was no wonder that there were places where he didn't like to be touched, but he had just rubbed him. It seemed that he hadn't touched anything that could prove him to be a boy yet. Was it too small, or had he really been wrong all this time and this was actually a female beast? The last medical report hadn't come out yet. He wanted to ask the veterinarian carefully when he went back. Noticing that the little fox still kept his fierce eyes, DeWitt took the small pot Archie had put down before and then freely took the dried meat out of it. At the sight of his actions, when Jin's heart was alarmed at once, and a pair of black bean dot like eyes stared at DeWitt, Chi. Don't use the same trick every time. Do you think if you give me good food, I'll forgive you easily? Want to eat? He put the dried meat in front of Wen Jin. Chi. No. But it smells good. Lunch will be in two and a half hours. When DeWitt finished, there was a sudden jingle on his watch. When Jin's eyes stared at the dried meat, swallowed his saliva silently and cursed in his heart that he had no guts to stretch out his paws. When he heard the sound, his eyes lit up instantly. He has heard this noise before. Basically, every time someone comes, there will be this noise. Is this someone coming again? Seeing DeWitt's frowning, the tail behind when Jin's buttocks could not help waving. His small eyes were bright. He thought, come on, call the big fool away, so I can eat the meat strips. He didn't know if DeWitt really heard his inner voice. He put the meat strip in front of Wen Jin as he wished. Then he turned to a wall and pressed it twice. The wall opened and exposed the corner of an office. DeWitt went in, seemed to think of something and looked back in the direction of Wen Jin. Wen Jin, who was still secretly confirming whether the man had left, immediately turned his head 180 degrees and looked like, I wasn't looking at you just now. Looking at the little fox hiding his ears and stealing his heart, DeWitt clicked the corner of his mouth slightly and entered another room. He did not close the door completely, 
leaving a small gap. When Jean raised his ears and heard that there seemed to be a person in the room. The two men appeared to be discussing something. When Jean could hear it, but could not understand it. He thought about it and judged that DeWitt would not be able to come back for a while. His eyes turned, and he quickly bowed his head and ate the dried meat. The delicious juicy fragrance was instantly on his tongue. As the delicious warmth spread to the tip, when Jean snatched more and bit it. As he bit, his eyes fell on the bag of water system lingshire beside his pillow. It should be a good time to absorb energy now, and it would just give him a quiet environment to recover his demon Dan, but. Sniffing the smell of meat still remaining in the air, wagging his tail warmly, he was a little undecided. When the last bit of meat was swallowed down, when Jean gave a gentle whine and without hesitation, quickly jumped to the bedside, pulled the little jar that DeWitt had just opened onto the bed and swayed his tail as he ate it happily. But the jar was deep, the claws were short, and after eating most of it, there was no way to get to the innermost dried meat. Feeling anxious, he simply drilled his head inside, risking getting stuck in the mouth of the jar and destroying his image. He finally bit the last few dried meat pieces, and he was so happy that his tail could not help shaking. But suddenly, he found out. Things had gone wrong. DeWitt, who had gone to the other room, was listening to Cassie's report. He was unconscious for a month. It wasn't a short time. It was enough for a lot of things to happen. Not only with the Zergs but even within the Empire, there was more than a little change. When he first woke up, Archie, as the doctor in charge, called a halt to his work, but now it was different. Marshall, Cook, that fellow I have long been disgusted with, when you were unconscious, he constantly advocated in the military department to split the Legion, saying it was very unpleasant as it is and that a new selection is what we need. Cassie closed the report, grimacing. There's nothing wrong with that idea. DeWitt looked at the numerous reports Cassie gave him. Frontier security is the first duty. You are the most familiar with the Zerg Frontline Corps. Leadership promotion and necessary dismantling are conducive to the stability of the frontier. But then, after confirming that the Zerg have not attacked, what did he suggest to the Utar? Marshal, what did the Utar do to us then? How many people have been killed on the frontier? Lord Count has been on the frontier for so many years, and it's hard to suppress the Utar. He's now rushing to stick his butt out. When you woke up, the news of Capital Star was also released by him. I'm the kind of person who bothers him. Cassie said frankly, if we battle in the frontier, he will make some messy changes or reforms in the back. You have been in a coma for a month, and he has constantly been trying to form alliances. DeWitt looked up at him and said, Uttar has been doing nothing. Yes. The bill was put forward last month, three or five days ago. The ambassadors have been sent. Cassie was angry. While DeWitt was in a coma due to the Zerg poison, Cook tried to change the empire and chose to show off to the Uttar. In the unfortunate news that DeWitt could not wake up, the military department was even compromised. DeWitt was silent for a moment and tapped his finger lightly on the table. I see. Sort out the report and put all the things concerning the Zerg in the front, followed by Uttar Star, the rest in the back row and give them to me in ten minutes. These two days, you'll have to work hard and wait for the servant after returning to the army. In place, these things can be handed over. Yes. Cassie straightened up and saluted. After the salute, his eyes turned around. By the way, Marshal, that beast. Is it all right? Cassie said this with a little nervousness showing on his face. Obviously, this was not what he wanted to ask by himself. From waking up until now, DeWitt had indeed neglected to explain this matter to others. It was essential to have peace of mind. Assyrians had little faith in the beast, and there were a lot of storms in the open and in the dark about his contract. Just as DeWitt was trying to speak, he suddenly heard a chitter in his ear, Chi. His eyebrows moved and Cassie, in front of him, apparently heard it as well. DeWitt's eyes flashed with a trace of surprise. 
Little Fox was having fun, but how did its voice sound so different from usual? Soon DeWitt heard a second trembling voice, Chi. Now DeWitt could clearly hear the difference. How many grievances were there in that tone? With a quick look, DeWitt pushed his chair back and went straight to the door. He took a long step inside the room and saw the bed was full of food scraps, but the little fox was not there. Sound of chi came again, and DeWitt quickly went to the bedside. Then he saw four feet facing the sky, his head stuck in the dark glass jar, and he was whining pitifully. L.R.G. DeWitt. Dot. Before he could go over, he saw the little fox with two claws tightly fastened to the edge of the glass jar, two hind legs on the ground, arched his small buttocks with great effort, as if he were exerting. But there was something wrong with this direction. DeWitt, who felt a slight willfulness come from the fox, did not stop. He still quickened his pace in that direction, but his eager little fox was faster than him. A crack spread up to where his two claws were pressed. The next second, the sound of the heavy glass cracking was heard. The inside of the glass jar, where when Jean was trapped, seemed to have been impacted by something. It burst suddenly and then it broke apart thoroughly. As soon as DeWitt saw this, he rushed up with great speed and reached out his broad hand. Without hesitation, the palm reached into the newly broken glass residue and knocked the back of Wen Jin's head, which was about to retreat from the room. The author has something to say. Wen Jin. Super heartache. I knew I was going to be caught by you, so I don't need the painful explosion. Q.A.Q. DeWitt. Well, I don't care. I'll give it to you in the evening. Wen Jin. What do you mean, DeWitt? What is the evening? DeWitt. Is it okay now? Wen Jin. We have a loyal dog in our family. Every day, we have to burn our old face clean. Imagine the scene in the last natural passage. I think the action is funny. Dot angle. Chapter 15 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Life is a series of tragedies translated by Addis of Exiled Rebels Scanlations It was so shameful. When Jean lay on the bed that had been cleaned up and pretended to be dead. He just wanted to eat a piece of meat so he got into the jar and couldn't pull out his head. He felt shame. He was even hit by DeWitt. He just wanted to bury himself for a few minutes. And after DeWitt picked him up from the ground, he said to the man at the door with a blank face, See. It's good. Although the man at the door nodded like he was pounding garlic, when Jean thought that the intonation of this big silly could be translated in minutes. It was all silly. Did you see it clearly? It was really a grievance. When Jean was lucky to break the glass jar. He had used his energy unconsciously to get his head out, and then the jar broke into pieces on the ground. He just had to stand up and refuse to admit that he had something to do with it. DeWitt, anyway, that guy couldn't argue with him. If he had known that his appearance would be caught by the other party, he would have avoided breaking the glass jar. He could have saved some Reiki. When Jean thought deeply, feeling very sad inside as if he had lost the whole world all of a sudden. DeWitt, who had disposed of the glass debris on the ground, looked at the little fox on the pillow and was amused. He couldn't understand how the little fox's head got stuck when he ate something. He thought of the earlier scene and reached out to grab the little white fox's claws. You're so powerful. When Jean pushed his fingers away from him with his claws. There was a whimper stuck in his throat, his eyes remained motionless, and he continued to show no love. Next time I come across this situation, come to me. What if either of us stepped on the glass? DeWitt went on trying to reach out and touch his face. Chi. How could this happen again? Next time will be your illusion. This man is not right in the head. When Jean chirped and chittered, pushing DeWitt's hand away again with the soft pads of his paws. Looking at the little fellow's dejected face, DeWitt avoided his sharp claws, pinched his pads, and then looked at the glass pieces that had been disposed of. His eyes were dim. Why are you so strong? Chi. 
What's the matter with you? Isn't it good to treat each other as if nothing happened? Why keep talking about it all the time? He doesn't want to save his face. When Jean glared at DeWitt angrily, then continued to lean on the pillow, his ears drooping, half of his face squeezed out of sight by the pillow. His big tail was in front of his body, his four claws on each paw stretched straight, and his whole body was in a dead state. Seeing his soft appearance, DeWitt felt itchy and wanted to reach out and touch the little fellow's face. However, he was pushed away by four claws again. The force was not particularly strong. DeWitt squinted, but his fingers were still on the little fox's paw pads. He pressed in between the pads and the little fox pushed him aside. After several rounds, with the other side's dejected look, DeWitt wanted to laugh. After playing with Wen Jean for a while, hearing his wrist beep a reminder of Cassie's message, DeWitt got out of bed and went to another room. Before leaving, he poured out a small plate of dried meat and put it in front of Wen Jean to comfort the dying fox. He hadn't expected that this little fellow would like to eat jerky so much. But breaking the jar and the ensuing glass pieces were too dangerous. It would be better for him to find something that was not easy to get hurt from even if it was broken. When Jean looked at DeWitt's retreating head and did not see him return. The little fox was very unhappy to see the dried meat put in front of him like a hill. He had just lost face because of this harmful thing. Now the man was just putting it in front of him as if he was mocking him. When Jean thought this and stared at the jerky for a while, then rushed up and took a big bite. After eating nearly two containers of dried meat, when Jean was satisfied. After a big yawn in the quilt, he remembered something. Looking up at DeWitt, the guy still didn't close the door this time, but it didn't affect his business. When Jean moved to the bottom of the bed and dragged the sack of water lingshire to the center of the bed. Then he felt the warm and abundant reiki in the lingshire satisfactorily for a while. These things were his most intimate existence in the world. After squinting happily, when Jean began to absorb them. Familiar Reiki slowly poured into his dantian. It had been so long since he had felt this feeling that when Jean could not help but emit a grunting voice, silently shouting in his heart, more. Feeling the energy gently wrapping around his dantian before it eventually flowed to his limbs. When Jin's whole body seemed to be stretched out. Although this was not enough to completely fix his broken demon Dan, this kind of spiritual feeling was like ecstasy to him. Before long, when Jean was immersed in the warmth of the energy flowing through him. He had originally intended to drain only two or three pieces, but that idea was pushed entirely to the back of his head. DeWitt went out to deal with official documents, but the scene from earlier would not leave his mind. Thinking about it, he opened the star network, went to search what is a normal strength of a chi beast. Soon, many results came rushing in. DeWitt opened the first one and saw a detailed description of a contract beast. In most cases, the strength of a chi beast is proportional to its body, the same is true of its ability. The smaller the size of the chi beast, the weaker its ability. If it is a large chi beast cub, its strength will be slightly larger than that of a small chi beast cub. However, the phase change of its strength mostly occurs in its mature stage, which is also the reason why Chi Beast's cubs are generally weak. The little fellow was way too small, and even a normal fox should be bigger than that. He couldn't imagine him growing up to dozens of times the size of a person. DeWitt was somewhat dissatisfied with the answer he found. But Archie had said before that this little fellow's ability to identify energy stones was not normally available to any Chi Beasts. He could go back to the capital star and get an answer from old Lin. DeWitt was ready to turn off the interface, but as he slid the screen down to shut it, he suddenly saw another post that caught his attention. Ancient historical records show that chi beasts gained their abilities much earlier than human beings. All of them had the power of a thousand people, but since this was so long ago, it has become impossible to study the authenticity of such beasts. DeWitt's eyes locked on these sentences. He touched his chin, thinking that the little fox who liked the water.energy stones just broke the glass jar with his white claw, 
which was too small compared with the glass jar. He silently wrote down this article, turned off the optical network and prepared to continue reading the other official documents when he suddenly sensed a trace of shocking energy. DeWitts looked toward the movement, and his terminal received an alarm in the next second. In Assyria, every armor was highly sensitive towards any energy fluctuations because as it would have a significant impact on the armor. This was especially so for military armor, which had to be more cautious in this regard. Looking at the energy density inside his room recorded by the alarm, DeWitt looked in the direction of his bedroom. This density was already very high, and because such dense energy was in his room, it was only a warning. In other places, the guards with aircraft armor would have acted immediately. But, the thing was, he just didn't have any running energy at all, and there was no one in the room except him. Only the little fox. Dot as soon as he reached for the screen and slid across it, the bedroom monitor appeared. He watched the little fox on the bed pulling the energy stones toward him, and DeWitt's lips thinned slightly. His energy core sensed the energy moving around his body, and it started to become restless. He adjusted it for a long time before he could suppress the restlessness as much as possible. However, the energy absorption in the bedroom seemed not to be over yet. DeWitt was somewhat surprised. This level of energy absorption was only possible for an S.level race and, looking at the situation of the little guy, was he intending to absorb all ten energy stones. With such a large amount of energy, even if it was him, he was afraid he could not easily try it. Excessive energy absorption would aggravate the formation of energy storms, but the expression of the little fellow seemed to be calm, just like an old ability user who had absorbed energy stones for decades. DeWitt remained silent for a while, cancelled the alarm with his marshal's authority, and then looked at the little fox on the screen for a moment. Looking at the white furry face with squinted eyes, causing him to have a charming appearance. The little white claws were still kneading the energy stone, beside which the hill dot like dried meat had been eaten up. He had eaten all of it. DeWitt was still stabilizing his energy core while keeping the monitor on, he began to look at the official documents. His little fox was easily irritable, but DeWitt believed that it still had a set of principles. So in this matter, DeWitt chose to believe his judgment of the little fox. Half an hour later, he refused Archie's worried call and decided to let the fox absorb the energy in peace. After all ten spiritual stones were sucked clean, when Jean secretly pinched off a portion in his heart. To repair his cultivation, Reiki needed to form a cycle in his body and even continuously breed Reiki. However, it had to be done to complete his recovery. The cracks on his spiritual dan were still not mended, and he could not do anything about it. He still needed to save some Reiki in the body. A spillover situation could never happen, all it could do was scatter a little, but at that time, he did not care, because there was no way he could save this energy. Having a body with abundant spirit energy made when Jin's mood sore, and he was too lazy to care about these gains and losses. He pushed back the matter of opening his artifact to gather energy for his Dan. Reiki could be used at any time now, but first. Chi, he licked his paws and decided he was hungry. When Jin stretched lazily in bed, thinking that it was time for dinner. He remembered that the order had been delivered two hours ago, but DeWitt seemed to be still working. He really couldn't understand this race. When Jean thought these people do not know what enjoyment was. How was working every day enjoyable? In the past, when he was in that room, this man often worked during his training and sleeping. He was doing too much work, and it was a waste of life. But he just absorbed energy and was in a good mood, so he decided to remind the man to eat. Seeing the little fox on the bed retracting its paws back and forth on the energy stone, DeWitt turned off the monitor with a fixed look. Half a minute later, the little white fox came out of the room in high spirits. He jumped on the chair opposite DeWitt agilely and then continued to jump onto the table. At this time, however, things changed dramatically. The little fox rushed at the table, not forgetting to swipe out at DeWitt with his paw and his hairy tail flicked. But the next second, the little fox's body began to sink. 
At that moment, when Jin's heart went cold. His two front paws pulled hard on the table. As a result, there was no room for him to exert any strength. The more he clawed, the faster he heard a click, click, and when Jean fell straight from the corner of the table to the floor. The author has something to say. When Jean. You hit my head last time. How could I not be grabbed this time? Do it. Come on. One hand wrapped around his ass, the gentle movement of the explosion made his ears shake like clockwork, not stopping like a spinning spring. Chapter 16 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Soft paw pads translated by Addis of Exiled Rebel Scanlations as the chief medical officer of DeWitt's regiment, Archie also received the alarm from the energy fluctuation and was very uneasy. Others may think that such energy fluctuations were the result of DeWitt's improved health or even excitement caused by the energy density on the alarm. After all, for the Legion, nothing made them happier than the Marshal's successful recovery. But only Archie knows that it was impossible for DeWitt to run such density of energy in his current physical condition. Otherwise, it was likely to cause an energy storm. Although the average life expectancy of ordinary ability users was about 150 years, the more advanced ability users usually only live to about 40.3 years old. Even in science colleges, only a few people knew that life expectancy should be 300 years based on the physical qualities of the ability users, but so far only a few could live to that age because of the energy storms. DeWitt was 30.9 years old this year, for years away from the average life expectancy of high dot ranking ability users, but he was the most powerful ability user in the history of the empire, and it was inevitable that an energy storm would sweep over him earlier. Dovico so Archie saw that the energy fluctuation did not stop. He could not help sending a message to DeWitt asking about the other party's status. After being rejected, he was not confident enough to stay away from his room. After receiving the other party's consent, he immediately went into DeWitt's room. As soon as he entered the door, Archie saw DeWitt sitting in his chair with a flat face and a new blanket on his desk. No, it was the little fox. Archie paused and went forward to find that DeWitt was holding a spoon with steamed eggs, which were still warm. They were Potterbird's eggs, and they tasted delicious. Archie had the kitchen prepare them for the little fox. The fox was recovering from a serious injury and was still young. It was best to use this kind of thing to supplement his nutrition, and this little fellow seemed to like the soft yellow food very much. But today's little fox was not the same. DeWitt put the spoon in front of the little fox for half a day. The latter didn't even eat, and he drooped on the table and did not move. Archie could also see the dense fog from its back. What's wrong? Seeing DeWitt in good condition, Archie put down the snack, approached, and asked. DeWitt looked up at him. Chi. When Jean, who had not been in high spirits, saw DeWitt's action as if in an instant, his spirit had come back. He immediately raised his head and shouted fiercely at DeWitt, which was mighty. Archie frowned and quipped, Oh, this is jealousy. I haven't seen you for half a day. Your feelings have been well sublimated. Chi. Why does this man always talk nonsense? Every day he talks, he lies with his eyes open and when Jean was depressed but it was inconvenient to turn his head. There were many emotions in his eyes. His head hung down, his eyes drooped, his chin tucked in, and he chattered to himself. DeWitt, however, remained motionless and continued to deliver the spoon to Wen Jean. Do you want to eat or not? He said these words, but Wen Jean always felt that they smelled a little threatening. He thought that ten minutes ago when he had become a fox cake on the floor, it was like someone had taken his mobility away. His fur felt like it was going to blow up and his sharp claws itched. But his eyes moved, and he saw the spoon in front of him. He thought that he had to struggle with his neck to force himself not to lick the fragrant eggs. He couldn't help but swallow his saliva, and his eyes glowed. He pretended to be forced to accept the unequal treat, and he shouted at DeWitt, Chi. Eat as you like, but don't tell anyone what just happened. 
After that, the little fox kept opening his mouth, biting off the eggs from the spoon and just swallowing them without chewing. The furious white face could not help but show an enjoyable expression. He didn't know what type of eggs they were. The outer layer was a little hard, but after biting in, it was soft as water that broke apart in his mouth. Although the outer skin was a little cold, it was still warm and tasty inside. But it was just because it was not a dense food that people wanted to take another bite immediately after they finished eating. When Jean took only one bite and immediately glanced at the bowl secretly. His eyes were bright, but his body still remained motionless on the table, looking like a good child. After being together for these last few days, DeWitt knew something about this little fellow. He wanted to add another spoon to feed him subconsciously, but then he thought about something. He didn't move the spoon and pretended not to know what the little fox wanted to do. Chi, after a while, the anxious fox began pushing his hand, making a chitter sound with his voice and even stretched out his tender tongue and licked his nose. My heart seems to be poked by something soft. Archie swears that at that moment, he saw something unprecedented in the eyes of his friend, rich feelings. What's the situation? Seeing the little fox eating happily and wagging his tail secretly, DeWitt continued to tirelessly feed spoonful after spoonful of food and Archie suddenly questioned and felt sad about his past position of favorite person. As soon as his voice fell, when Jean, who had eaten happily, became stiff and did not eat any more eggs. DeWitt glanced at him and continued to put the spoon in front of him, answering Archie's question, it's a tantrum. That's what I said, but the words were drowned out. Archie swallowed his saliva, told himself to get used to it, and asked about the energy fluctuation. Archie was a woodreiki genius and was very sensitive to energy changes. If DeWitt's body produced such intense energy fluctuations, there would be no reason he couldn't feel it. He was quite sure that DeWitt, who was sitting in front of him now, was no different from a few hours ago. What about the violent energy fluctuation just now? DeWitt was silent for a moment. He did not try to help Archie's figure it out but in principle, what had just happened had nothing to do with him. He had no right to take over. After thinking for a while, DeWitt said, help me prepare some energy stones. Archie gave him the snacks he brought, frowned and disapproved. Are you going to go back? DeWitt's original plan was to return to the Academy of Sciences, first contact Old Lin, then consider the matter of his energy nucleus. Old Lin was an absolute authority expert in this field after all, and energy absorption would continue until then. In his body, the Zerg poisoning had been solved, but the problem of the energy storm was still latent. He couldn't take it lightly. When the little fox absorbed energy, he sat outside. At first, although he felt a lot of pressure, the energy core also had signs of restlessness, but it was different. He felt that his energy core began to yearn for energy, even to connect to the pulse around it and began to become smooth, like it absorbed something pure. He had not felt this feeling since he was 30.7 years old. His intuition told him that this might be an excellent opportunity. Thinking of this, his eyes fell on Wen Jean, who was biting at the eggs. He touched the little head and was not angry when he was pushed aside. Yeah. When Jean guessed DeWitt's thoughts, when he absorbed energy, he didn't pay attention to the spillover. As a matter of fact, what he didn't absorb was taken by these people. This is true for all people. In the past, on the Hongwang continent, he and his master lived in the mountains for many years with extraordinary spirits and did not move for hundreds of years. There were even people who had organized some factions there, they were quite big, easily hundreds of people. However, the spirit of monsters and beasts with ancient blood was really different from that of ordinary people. After all, the extraction ability of monsters and beasts was absolutely unique. Even the spirit scattered out was quite valuable, and since it had been scattered out, it was not a loss to be absorbed by this contract with him. However, there was one thing when Jean had always been curious about. DeWitt was a genius among his people. His veins were very suitable for celestial cultivation. 
In Wen Jin's former world, DeWitt would be the pride of heaven, the kind to be scrambled for by the big wigs, but here his body energy was very chaotic as if he did not know what to do. The reason was that the ability to build a foundation could barely be counted at a later stage and they were seemingly close to creating a dan, but Reiki could not be chaotic, so it was not the way to go. In the past, there were often monks who died of explosions on Hong Huang. It would be better for him to think back carefully. Both of them were now barely crew members on a boat. He could tolerate building gangs at the foot of his mountain. He had done nothing wrong except to quarrel and throw stones down occasionally. He could still cover up such a small tale. DeWitt, who had no idea that he was being examined by Wen Jin, convinced Archie that the bowl of eggs in his hand had been fed to the fox, mainly during the time Archie watched himself. Wen Jin was thinking about covering his small tail in the future and in the twinkling of an eye he saw DeWitt eating a piece of meat on his favorite plate. That kind of meat stick smelled good. It was next to a small bowl of eggs. Wen Jin thought it was specially prepared for him. Save your eggs and devour them. And even if DeWitt ate one, the two chatted, and Archie also ate one. After that, the DeWitt guy even went to grab another one. When Jin's patience reached its limit. He rushed up, bit off the strip, and then gave DeWitt a hateful look. In front of him, he ate the strip and licked his paws very thoroughly. Chi! How can the little tail scratch you again? Looking at the little fox whining suddenly, Archie thought that his new look was a bit cute. He thought that he had seen the soft paw pad of the little fellow occasionally before. Suddenly he felt a little itchy to know what it was like to be hit by them, so he reached out his hand to tempt the fox with a piece of dried meat. However, one hand was faster than him. DeWitt snatched the jerky Archie wanted to give the fox quickly. Then he looked at the little fox with pleasure, felt the soft paw pads of the little fox, and looked up at his friend unhappily. Archie, who was not able to touch the fox and was stabbed by glares. Dot. The author has something to say. One day, DeWitt was caught by a little fox while eating meat strips, and then the dark meat strips fell on the crotch of his pants. DeWitt raised his eyebrows. Do you still want to eat? Wen Jin. No, no more. Sorry for the slow pace in the coming chapters. Please blame me, sorry, do not dislike me. T.A.T. Chapter 17 You are listening at NovelFull.audio No one believes you translated by Addis of Exiled Rebel Scanlations After lunch, Cassie received the order to bring a box of energy stones. He knew that fire energy stone was DeWitt's attribute stone. In the reserve armory, they were sufficient, and most of the grades were not low. Although DeWitt had an eternal energy stone, it still needed a typical energy stone to replenish it when the demand was substantial. Additionally, although the energy in the eternal energy stone was persistent, its purity was not necessarily higher than that of some high-dot-order energy stones, which were suitable for wearing all year round for emergency rescue. In peacetime, they preferred to choose high-dot-order energy stones. However, with this theory, when Jin's way of things was utterly unacceptable. After seeing that box of fire lingshir, Wen Jin almost felt that these people's brains were broken. DeWitt still had an excellent spiritual stone on his body. It was not known how much higher the purity of DeWitt's spiritual stone was compared to an ordinary spiritual stone, but it could cycle Reiki itself. Why not use a good item if you already have it and can absorb from it? Why did they have to find these disposable ones? So when Cassie came to DeWitt's office with several boxes and opened them on the table, when Jean was very unhappy and didn't even want to put his paws on the spiritual stones. Chi. What do you want these for? Cassie saw when Jean the least since he frequented the room very few times. As soon as he moved his hand, the little fox came up, and he remembered that the veterinarian said that he liked shiny things. He couldn't help laughing. Marshall. This little thing wants some for itself, too. What kind of energy stone does it like? Chi. Wen Jin turned his head fiercely. You are a little thing, you are all small things. 
Archie, on the other side of the room, could not help shaking his head, thinking that Cassie had not seen the energy stone that the little fellow had distinguished before and had tied the fire energy to DeWitt. If he had seen it, he would not have said such a thing at the moment. After when Jean finished his ferocious glare against Cassie, he glanced casually over the box on the table. It didn't matter if he hadn't scanned his perception over it, but when he did, he was frightened by the scan. He unexpectedly found an earth stone with very disordered spirit from the five abundant fire. Stone rose. When Jean hesitated slightly, but could not care for anything else. He went straight to the stone and cocked his head. When Jin's movement quieted the room. Even Cassie was curious about how the little fox suddenly became so interested in the stones. DeWitt took the lead in responding and asked with a frown, what's wrong? When Jean plucked the stone out of the box with his paw and squinted. Chi. Big fool, someone wants to hurt you. Okay. Finding a discordance in a lyncher was very small. If it were big, in the past, ten out of ten people in Hong Huang would have avoided it for fear of inhaling a bit of unhealthy reiki that would damage their veins. Even when Jean didn't like this reiki very much, let alone the problems it would cause in DeWitt's body. And then, this spiritual stone. When Jin's nose moved, and his eyes flashed with a hint of disgust. There was the smell of bugs. When Jean was not very fond of the Zerg. This white fox always regarded his beauty as his pride, so he didn't like ugly foxes very much. Although DeWitt was completely different from the white fox in appearance, when Jean liked looking anyway, especially at the strong abdominal muscles. DeWitt's body had been badly damaged by the Zerg poison, and perhaps due to the influence of the contract, when Jean subconsciously hated and rejected the Zerg even more. Chi. When Jean stretched out a furry white paw and picked the stone out of the box directly. Clunk. The sound of the stone as it fell on the table. Ah. Energy stones were very precious things for those with abilities, especially those in front of DeWitt, which were all high dot level. When Cassie brought them over, they were all packed in a brocade box for fear of jostling them. Now, being pushed out of the box by Wen Jin's rude claw, Cassie could not help but take a step forward. If it weren't for DeWitt sitting at the table, he would have rushed out. DeWitt's eyes moved and reached out to touch the stone that had fallen on the table, but it was once again held by the little fox. Chi. It's not that I dislike you but can you touch less of this kind of thing. It's your weakness. You have more than one person's life connected to you now. When Jean cried out with great dissatisfaction. Although he had seen these Terrans lie and smile at the same time when he was eating and drinking among them before, when Jean still found it interesting. As long as it did not offend his interests, it was an excellent choice to be a fly on the wall. But this big fool was now his little tail and he was in a boat with him, so he needed to be a bit more cautious. When Jean patted DeWitt's hand again with the soft pads of his paw. The latter rarely understood the other side's intention of waiting. When he saw the other party stop moving, the little fox turned around and walked around the table. Finally, he bit a handkerchief and covered the lingshire. At that time, Cassie's eyes were as big as a copper bell. He watched the little fox block his superior from touching the energy stone and then found a piece of cloth. His superior quietly waited for the fox to pull the stone covered in the cloth towards him. After that, he grabbed the soul stone with his handkerchief according to the meaning of the little fox. Watching these two scenes happen in front of him, Cassie hardly knew which one he should be shocked by first. Env DeWitt, who picked up the stone, looked at it for a moment. Where's the detector? Cassie was stunned. When the stones were brought up, he had checked them and supervised it with his own eyes. But he would never question DeWitt's judgment. He immediately felt bad in his heart and turned to look for the detector. This stone. It's not right. Archie, who had been standing beside him, also understood what Wen Jean was trying to say. He looked at the stone in DeWitt's hand, and his face was solemn. Cassie had this taken from the warehouse, and he must have checked it before he brought it up. 
All of this could be a problem. Couldn't that mean even your hangar isn't clean? DeWitt did not speak, his eyes were a little deep, and his other hand touched Wen Jin's body, but he was kicked by the latter. Chi. Somebody else is here. Don't touch me. Cassie came back very quickly, and the machine was placed on the table, but he hesitated. Marshal, for safety, you can only get this machine. The rest are strictly recorded, and you need to have set restrictions in place before using it. This is a portable version, and the values it shows are not necessarily accurate. DeWitt put the stone on the table and the cloth over the stone. Casey took it immediately. But at that time, he had an intuition. In fact, what kind of inspection was not significant? Marshall seemed to have decided that the stone must be a problem in other ways because of the little fox. The idea flashed through Cassie's mind, and the energy stone was put into the machine. Ten minutes later, the three men in the room were all had heavy moods. Cassie looked at the test results, and his hands shook a little. He stood straight and looked ashamed. Marshall. The little fox, who was already lying down and was about to fall asleep because of this slow and magical way of identification, was shaken by his cry. Chi. Not only Cassie but also DeWitt's face is not very good. He thought that the biggest problem would be the change of the Zerg after being in a coma for a month. Secondly, the unsettled political parties in Capital Star. He did not expect that even his legions would be compromised. Even their commander's energy stones that were under heavy protection had been manipulated. What about other places? When Jean wanted to roar at the tall and black man, but he tried to resist it. After all, the man's emotional shame was so full that it seemed as if he could give him a knife at the moment and immediately thank himself for his crime without complaint. He licked his paw and looked at DeWitt's blackface. When Jean could not help sighing as he thought his little tail was too weak. He was just a worm. If he could find it, the Terran people could not deceive him. A delicious tribute would be good enough payment, just don't touch me all day and all night. Those zerglings could not touch a single hair on DeWitt's head even if they wanted to. Only those in this room knew about the compromisation, and they all reacted differently. Cassie, who was instructed by DeWitt, rushed out with blackface. Cassie is really straightforward. You can imagine that it's very unusual for him to take a portable testing machine and hide his emotions when he returns it. Will it be easy for him to do so? Seeing this, Archie was worried. He can do little about it, not just by brute force. DeWitt didn't seem to care much. Besides, if I didn't want this effect, I'd let someone else come when I took the instrument. Archie insisted when DeWitt still wanted to absorb energy and even moved Mrs. Margaret, demanding that she wait to meet DeWitt at least until they went back to Capital Stars to see old Lynn. Archie's stern countenance did not stretch a little until he gave some stern warnings to DeWitt before turning away. However, when he left, when Jean suddenly smelled a faint odor from him, very faint, but it still caught it and could not help frowning. When Wen Jean was thinking about why the Zerg smell was so weak, a big hand suddenly touched his head. The former turned his head and gave DeWitt an in-depth look. I believe you. Ha! Huh. Wen Jean was stunned. But just because I believe you is not enough. I brought the instrument here to let Cassie see the results. DeWitt's voice was sincere. When Jean recovered from his initial confusion and probably understood what the other party was saying. He could not help narrowing his fox's eyes and wagging his tail behind him. I know you have extraordinary abilities. Even if you don't want to show me now, I can wait. Until then, I will keep all your abilities secret. The author has something to say. Question. A sunshine like man. When Jean. I don't like it. Q, a cunning man. Wen Jean. I don't like it. Question. A man like DeWitt. Wen Jean wagged his tail unconsciously. Chapter 18 You are listening at novelfull.audio
drenched translated by Addis of exiled rebel scanlations by the time the wit finished his day in the office, it was already late at night. 30.7 hours had passed since they left Liberets. According to the total journey of three days, the capital star was not far away from them. Standing by the window and pausing for a moment, DeWitt looked at the road map emerging from the glass, and his eyes fell on the endpoint, the halo point representing the capital star, Ashier. The capital star was where DeWitt grew up, but perhaps as his mother said he had frontier blood in his body. For him, the frontier had always been the closest place to his heart. Compared with the bustling and noisy capital star, he preferred the endless feeling of the frontier in front of him. But going back was inevitable. DeWitt's deadpan face seemed to get colder at the thought of Cook, who Cassie had mentioned before. Active summation to Uttar When Uttar captured Assyrians and did experiments on them in secret, tens of thousands of victims were killed. When he was discovered, he launched a direct war. His father and his soldiers fought hard to defeat Uttar's first fleet. Uttar was very good at intercepting information. So how many people went out in that bloody battle as a whole? For the sake of intelligence and the overall situation, how many teams worked hard to save a person's life and let him return to the camp? And many of those who survived were still in his army. He was unconscious for a month. In Cook's eyes, it was not much different from death. DeWitt didn't care much about what other people thought of him. But if he let the matter go, all the soldiers in the frontier would be chilled. They lost to the Zerg, but they would never lose to the Utar. In the past and now, the great enemies could form an alliance, but it was not a way to seek peace directly with the humble attitude of surrendering the national prestige first. Especially as he just saw in his official document, Cook even intended to take a small part of the information from the Frontier Legion as a message to show the sincerity of peace. There was a storm in DeWitt's eyes under his eyelashes, but soon he felt the dull pain of his energy nucleus. DeWitt's lips were drawn in a straight line, with the frequency of his energy storms and spiritual dissociations and the near-dot-helpless progress of the Empire in this regard, it would not take long for him to face death. But he would defend the front lines, like his father, until the last second of his life. He pinched his nose, closed the terminal, took a shower, and walked into the room lightly. He saw the small white fox curled up, sleeping next to the pillow. DeWitt tried to step as quietly as possible, and his eyes softened at the sight in front of him. When Jean always slept on the bed as this little fellow was afraid of the cold. Although he was unwilling to admit it, the human heater named DeWitt improved his sleep quality, especially since his serious injury. So when he first came, he abandoned his dignity and chose to sleep in bed. He shared a bed with others in the past but hadn't shared a bed since his siblings and parents. DeWitt paid little attention to whether people could sleep in a bed with a contracted beast wand he fully intended to implement the belief that he should be good to his contract beast. He knew that the little fellow was afraid of the cold and sometimes wanted to sleep with him under the quilt. E but DeWitt had been reluctant to prepare a new quilt for one Jean since the small beast was always sleeping next to the pillow. Beov after going to bed as quietly as possible, DeWitt stared at the little curled up fox beside his pillow for a while. Suddenly, he felt a little itchy, and his fingers touched one Jin's head lightly. Seeing that the little fellow was sleeping soundly and had no reaction to his movements, DeWitt pinched his paws and rubbed the soft fur on his belly. After that, he reached back to Wen Jin's head again and stroked the smooth fur on the little fellow's head with great care. Soon, two strange counter dot spirals appeared on Wen Jin's head. The marshal, who had been busy with his official documents and wanted to sleep, looked at the two spirals as if he had suddenly found great pleasure besides work. He touched the head and stomach of the little fox. Before long, the soft hairs on the gentle fox were raised from the left to the right by the whirl he had made. His eyes lit up with a sinister light as they landed on that big fluffy tail. It looked like it would feel good in his hands. DeWitt, who had entered the no one would imagine I would do this mode, couldn't help but slowly move his hands towards the fluff. However, in the second that the crime was about to happen, the little fox, who was still sleeping, 
suddenly changed his sleeping position. He moved his body, blocked his belly with his tail, and wrapped his body tighter together with his buttocks curled in. DeWitt's hands were stiff, and his brain seemed to wake up in an instant. He thought of the fox's attitude to his touch during the day. He silently took his hand back, paused for a moment, and turned off the light. When Jean had a nightmare. He woke up in the middle of the night with two bulging hairs and blinked wet eyes at the air. Tangled hair was a very uncomfortable thing, especially when he could clearly feel that it was not smooth. So when he got up, when Jean was going crazy and wanted to touch his head crazily, but his claws were too short of reaching his head. He was anxious enough that he wanted to die, and his heart was tense. He couldn't understand why when he has slept in the wild, his fur had never gotten like this before, all he had been doing was sleeping. When Jean has always felt kind of guilty about this as his sleeping position was not very good. When his parents were still alive, he could roll over all the foxes in the nest overnight and whack them all with his paws. When Jean always liked his hair to be beautiful and shiny, so he was very skilled in licking. It took him a long time to flatten down the hairs on his head, but there was still a slight angle left. When Jean could feel the existence of this angle and silently warned himself that he could not sleep so capriciously in the future. Subconsciously, he licked his paws and found that his paws were cold. This often happened. In the past, when Jean would immediately warm himself. But now, he squinted with his fox's eyes and put the meaty pads of one paw directly on DeWitt's neck. Feeling the warm temperature, when Jean squinted comfortably and stuffed the other paw into the same area, stepping on DeWitt's neck. Thinking of that dream just now, when Jin's eyes dimmed. Before going to bed, he took medicine. He had enough energy to find a magic pill that was placed in the innermost part of his artifact. Now that the medicine had come into effect, he could feel warm currents swimming in his body. Although his demon Dan had not recovered, the medicine had not been fully effective, but the internal injuries in his body were finally healing. After silently praising the genius who had worked out the medicine, when Jean stretched out on his pillow, looked at DeWitt beside him and remembered the very unpleasant dream he had just had. DeWitt's words a few hours ago flashed through Wen Jin's mind. Licking his paws, Wen Jin's eyes flashed with a ray of light. He was happy to see the human race but was not interested in their lives and deaths. But he liked the sincere people. The eyes of the Terran when he said those words were very pleasing to him. After thinking for a while, when Jean looked around the room before his eyes fell back on DeWitt. The pulse of his veins, viscera, and all organs were immediately visible in front of him. His meridians were chaotic, and the channels were impacted, especially at the mouth of the meridians. When Jin's eyes moved slightly. This person's veins passage had many small wounds, which were signs of being impacted by chaotic reiki, which was very rare. For a demon, they alienated Reiki from their demon Dan then absorbed the chaotic Reiki before it was dealt with by the demon Dan. After a long time of such regulation, his Reiki would become normal. The same was true of the human race, so vain passages usually did not show such signs unless it was directly oppressed by spiritual force from outside the body by a person with high mana ability, but this was clearly impossible. When Jean had not seen anyone who could surpass DeWitt's strength and inflict such trauma on him. So, was this fellow directly absorbing his Reiki from his veins? When Jean was stunned, then thought about it for a moment and felt that it made sense. He had not looked at Cassie or Archie's veins, but the group were such laymen in the use of spiritual stones, Lingshire, that it was possible to absorb them in the wrong way. Reverse absorption of Reiki would cause all the energy to reverse. The more that was consumed, the faster the reversal, the more efficiently the body would burst, and the Terran would die. This was a corrupted way to absorb Reiki. It was no wonder this guy's body was like this. When Jing narrowed his eyes. He didn't know from whom the group had learned how to absorb Reiki. It was strengthened to turn the Reiki of heaven and earth into their own use immediately. However, such a method significantly reduced their lifespan thinking of this, when Jean moved his white paw over DeWitt's body two times. 
In his sleep, DeWitt felt a hand swimming in his abdomen. It was white and slender, each knuckle distinct, with a slight chill. It patiently wandered through his abdomen, causing it to itch a little. DeWitt did not understand what was going on at first and his body could not move, so he could only let the hand move. When his thoughts completely followed the hand, he felt as if he understood something but did not understand at all. When DeWitt fell into this daze, the hand suddenly left. He seized the hand subconsciously with a movement in his heart. The other party seemed to pause. DeWitt was worried that the hand would disappear and held on to it tightly. He didn't know how long had passed. A sense of suffocation came from his neck and. It was itchy. Suddenly waking up, DeWitt found the fox lying on his neck with four legs straight from neck to shoulder, gnawing on a strip on his throat. After staring at the ceiling for a while, DeWitt took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and couldn't help thinking of the hand in his sleep. A warm aftertaste lingered in his lower abdomen, and his pants near his manhood were wet. The author has something to say. When Jean. Did you wet your bed? Ha ha ha, you are silly. I was a fox who wet the bed the least in my nest when I was young. DeWitt. This is not urine. Wen Jean. Ah. DeWitt. I'll tell you this evening. Wen Jean. Why, is it so uncomfortable to have a fox's appetite? That night, Wen Jean, who had been done three times, was confused and heard a dull voice. Now do you know what it is? The forced fox's ears trembled, and the little tips were suspiciously red. Chapter 19 You are listening at NovelFull.audio When Jean said, it's underrated. Translated by Addis of Exiled Rebel Scanlations When Jing intentionally stared at DeWitt, who was going to take a bath in the early morning, and the latter was stiff. When the door was closed, when Jean sniffed a faint smell in the air, then he could not help snickering. He thought that the young man was like a teenager and he did not know what kind of spring dream he had last night. He usually looked very honest when he slept. Facts had proven that it was very pleasant to see a silly and embarrassed person in the early morning. So when he was forced to sleep with his paws around DeWitt last night, interrupting him in the middle of his meditation, he gave up. After stretching his body in bed and stretching his comfortable and lazy waist, when Jean walked through his body with his consciousness and found that his internal injury was almost completely healed and his mood soared. Thinking that it really was a loss of the medicine to use it for such a thing, when Jean knew that as long as his demon Dan was restored entirely and guaranteed full spirituality, he would be able to dissolve the contract. Then he could think of a way to break through the space-time void and return to Hong Huang. However, after a satisfying breakfast, through DeWitt's conversation with Archie, when Jean knew that they were almost at their destination. When Jean knew before that they were in a high dot speed vehicle, he could feel the atmosphere around them. When he first heard the words destination, he didn't really have much interest in it. He had seen Liberettes before and didn't like the desolate feeling at all. He didn't even bother to look at it more just thinking that the people of the world were all in the same place, but he didn't find any interest in them. Until the moment he saw the capital star Ashier, whose style was totally different from that of Liberettes, he felt the crackling of his face and his eyes could not help staring. He thought in his heart that these two worlds were completely and totally different. Layers of interlaced buildings, black strips suspended in the air, as well as a variety of bubble clouds, floating in the air of balls and hard iron, all of these things when Jean had never seen before. Those high dot rises, strange dot shaped buildings arranged together also had a unique aesthetic feeling. It suddenly hit when Jean. Many of the buildings were colored with colors that he had never seen before, let alone how beautiful they were to the eye. The little fox, deeply attracted by the planet, had been lying in front of the transparent glass ever since he left the aircraft and followed down in the suspension vehicle. He loves Capital Star. He is much more excited now than when he saw Liberettes. Archie joked alongside DeWitt. Chirp. Kai Kai screamed on Archie's shoulder, stupid bumpkin fox. Chi. 
When Jean turned around and shouted fiercely. You're so noisy I could break your neck. When Jean, who had just absorbed Reiki and had recovered from his internal injury, knew that this world's Reiki might not be as difficult to obtain so he couldn't help but use a little Reiki this time. The bird was really annoying, a little clever and could speak, but in the past few days, every time when Jean tried to ask something, the other party liked to pretend to be foolish. Anyway, he just refused to answer his questions. After he was so angry that he burst out and scolded, he immediately began to chirp at him in rage. They chirped and chittered at each other. For such a scenario, Archie felt very gratified. He even went to DeWitt and said that the two beasts had a good relationship. It would be better to put them together for fun, and they would be good friends in the future. When Jean was in a dog's mood when he heard this sentence. He didn't want to look at this silly bird all day long. Feeling a fierce pressure, Kai Kai immediately trembled, subconsciously shook his wings, his neck went stiff, his eyes drooped and he gave a pitiful look, chirp. Chirp, will old Lin check him? DeWitt asked. Archie nodded. I asked old Chen to come here too. Although he was not given a degree professionally, he has always been the best veterinarian in my heart. DeWitt trusted Archie and stopped asking. However, when Jean turned his head disdainfully. What veterinarian did he think of? The world was not even sure how to cure Zerg poisoning, and he still expects this guy to be a good veterinarian. His eyes continued to follow the colorful buildings all the way forward, and suddenly his eyes fell on a big, fluffy ball. Chi. What is that? What is that? When Jean snapped at DeWitt in a hurry. The car they were in was swift, and soon the thing disappeared. But apparently, he asked the right question. It was a fluffy pink ball. DeWitt looked at it as if it had two big heads, but Archie next to him quickly responded, that's the cotton candy house. It's on the famous gourmet street in that area. Street of Delicacies. When Jin's eyes lit up at once. Ordinarily you can go and see it, but I hear that the capital star is in a mess recently. Be careful. Archie hesitated for a moment and said that Mark had reminded them before he left that the contract bests had been recently stolen and poisoned on Capital Star. Although the status of contract beasts had been meager in the Empire, poisoning was still rare in the past, let alone its frequency right now, according to Mark. Chi. Mess. What chaotic mess dared prevent him from eating? When Jin's face was unhappy. He looked at DeWitt. He didn't want to take the man with him, he could fight for himself. He was miserable and used his paws to tap against the plane's window. Someone will examine you later. DeWitt suddenly said, if you accept it, I'll take you out to play. When Jin's big tail flickered and was immediately bought by this sentence. He also felt that his small tail was really worth it. However, when Wen Jin was happy, Kai Kai beside him chirped uncomfortably. Archie turned his head and touched his bird's head. This time, not only DeWitt and Wen Jin would be examined, but also Kai Kai would be checked up as well. He was feeling uncomfortable about this. Watching this harmonious scene, Wen Jin could not help but hum in his heart. He thought that the bird did this intentionally and made a deliberate sad appearance to have Archie comfort him when, in fact, he had no gloomy aura around him. This was why when Jean always said that people were really deceiving. Chi. Drama queen. When Jean wagged his tail and cried sarcastically. They were on the express line, so it was not long before when Jean arrived at the Academy of Sciences. It was a vast and busty building, full of rigorous atmosphere everywhere, the overall architectural style was hard, just like DeWitt's face. When Jean looked at this place, instantly felt as if he had fallen from heaven to hell, it was really unpleasant. While thinking about it, when Jean could not help thinking that the people all had their own houses. Wouldn't DeWitt's home be the same style? Or would it have wild architectural ridges? Maybe he'd have to live together with him in the future. The desire to dissolve the contract was even more apparent. 
When the plane stopped at the station, Wen Jin, with a depressed, cold and unhappy face, was forced off by DeWitt, who stuffed several small dried slices of meat at him. Wen Jin whined in his heart, I don't want to be taken here. This ugly building is not as beautiful as the ones we saw on the way here. What's the meaning of this place? Chi. It's too ugly here. When we go to Gourmet Street, we must eat enough, swallow the warmth of dried meat, and say to ourselves like this in our hearts. Looking at the little fellow's frustrated appearance, DeWitt wanted to think of some words to comfort the fox. After all, Kai Kai was wrapped up in Archie's clothes pretending to be frightened. Of course, his little fox didn't like to be examined. But before he could think of what to say, he heard a familiar, provocative, disgusting voice, why, isn't this Marshal DeWitt? Archie's face drew down into a frown, and DeWitt's eyes cooled down in an instant. Looking over, he saw a blonde man standing at the door of the Academy of Sciences, followed by several men in suits and leather. Cook, the blonde and blue that eyed member of the Imperial Council and standing behind him were those mostly from the House of Representatives. Although all those intended to catch wind of DeWitt's return knew he was coming back, for the others who were not notified by a letter figured his return was an absolute event. So if people wanted to create opportunities for trouble, they couldn't avoid it. DeWitt looked coldly at Cook and did not even say a word in response. It was when Jean, who was still depressed, smelled the taste of gossip and the black beans blinked vigorously. Cook wasn't embarrassed by DeWitt's indifference. Oh, I didn't expect to have such good luck today. I could still meet the marshal when I came to the Academy of Sciences to get a report. We were all happy to hear about your recovery, but why did you just come back and run to the Academy of Sciences? With Cook's identity, there was no reason for him to go to the Academy of Sciences to get his report in person and with such a large group of people, his inferiority was not even a perfunctory excuse, it was just full of ridicule. DeWitt's voice was cold. It's none of your business. Watching each other's reaction carefully, when Jean licked his nose and came to the conclusion that Cook had apparently been given DeWitt's cold back many times. Such a face.saving dialogue could go on, and Cook had no intention of stopping at all. He went on enthusiastically, how can you say it's irrelevant? Now all the people of the Empire say, Marshal, your recovery is related to the life and death of our country. Well, this little thing, is it your contract beast? As soon as Cook said this, curious expressions appeared in the eyes of the group behind him. It had long been heard that DeWitt's rehabilitation was related to a chi beast, but whether their marshal had completely recovered or not, had yet to be verified. The average life expectancy of high.ranking ability users was another thing against DeWitt. The ordinary people did not know, but the people of their status were clear about this information. At this juncture, if DeWitt was bound by a powerful beast, they might be a little afraid, but now the so-called national hero Marshal himself was unfortunately tied with such a weak beast. Several people's eyes now showed their irrepressible disdain. But unlike this group of people, Cook was probably a person who had to start and end the conversation. His mind flickered and a lot of words flashed by before he finally breathes out through his teeth, it's quite beautiful. Halfway through, Cook's face changed, and he added with a smile, I just don't know if it's a golden jade among the rest. By the way, I have to remind Marshall that there has been a lot of trouble in the capital recently. Many chi beasts have been poisoned. Old Lin advocated sending chi beasts to the Academy of Sciences for research. I heard that they are all inside now. They are very manic. This one in your family is so weak that the energy core hasn't stabilized yet. It's better not to bring it in. If you can't get in at any time, you'll frighten the little one. The author has something to say. Wen Jin. I will conquer the sea of stars, galaxy, in the future. DeWitt. Okay. Wen Jin. What about you in the future? DeWitt. Not later today. Chapter 20 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Poison translated by Addis of Exiled Rebels Scanlations, of course, 
Cook said, halfway through and saw that Archie's face was too dark to look at, he raised his mouth and added, I know the marshal won't be relieved. That's a reminder. It's a real concern that this little fellow looks weak. If he's accidentally frightened and causes a chain reaction, wouldn't that be bad? Wen narrowed his eyes and gave Cook a deep look. He found that some people inherited the genes for an early death very decisively even in different worlds. A chain reaction should be considered good news for you. DeWitt looked unhappy. Otherwise you'd have a very uncomfortable life. DeWitt didn't seem to want to spend too much time on that man. After that, he went straight into the Academy of Sciences, bypassing Cook. The little fox in his arms gave a timely whine. DeWitt, who was not in a good mood, looked down at the little fox. Looking into his wet eyes, he always felt that the other party seemed to care about him and touched his white furry head gently. However, the worried one Jean was not concerned about him but felt a little sympathetic to this big silly man. It must be very uncomfortable not to fight with others. It was also that he did not speak the language here. Otherwise, if he did speak the language, he would be able to scold him for his yellow fur. Two men and two beasts went in, and Cook outside could not help thinking of DeWitt's ugly expression. There were members of conservative staff beside him. Some were not assured, whispering, Mr. Cook, we don't know if the marshal has completely recovered or even half recovered. It's better to be an enemy easily. The prime minister has always been close to him. Besides, we do need his strength to face the Zerg. The so dot called, stay on the line. What line is left? Cook rolled his big white eyes. Do you know how his old man died? The alliance with Uttar is what I advocate. The line between him and me is long gone. Either he dies, or I die. What's the use of maintaining that face? Can you eat it? After a pause, Cook complacently added, he's just a half-dot-suspended body. I'll see how long he can live. Cook said that and went on inside. He had not finished his play yet. He came to the Academy of Sciences just to know what DeWitt's condition was. People in the Academy of Sciences were not united. He knew that DeWitt would not easily put the news out. Then he would follow him directly, and nobody would dare to stop him. But without taking two steps inside, Cook began to find something wrong. What is that? The first sound came from the people beside him. Yes, why is it so stinky? When the man spoke, he immediately picked it up. At this time, Cook also smelled some extremely foul smell, so strong that people could hardly breathe, turning the stomach upside down and most importantly, it seemed to be spreading out of his own body. Cook's face changed as he sniffed at his cuffs, while the eyes of a group fell on him. Mr. Cook, you were just. Did you step on anything? Someone covered his nose and asked in a muffled voice. He was also a politician with a clear and sharp tongue who could talk at any time in the House of Representatives. But now he was afraid to breathe in the atmosphere blocked by the smell and could not speak clearly. Several people looked at him, and he looked at them. They all backed up several steps and Cook, the source of the stink, had a dark face. Just as the crowd at the door was in a mess because of the sudden stench, a pair of bright black diamond beans were stealthily burying itself into DeWitt's shoulders, looking in their direction and shaking with laughter. DeWitt and his party continued to walk inside. Soon after, a neatly dressed old man with white hair came out in front of them. When he saw DeWitt, his eyes flashed. Marshal. Old Lin. DeWitt really respected the elder in front of him, even stopped and made a slight bow in the direction of the old man. You. Old Lin clapped DeWitt's arm, put his hand on his old glasses on the bridge of his nose, and looked at the latter carefully. There seemed to be a lot of questions to ask. However, they were still in the Hall of the Academy of Sciences at the moment. Archie thought of the politicians who were glancing at them and hurried forward. Professor Lin, I am here. Let's go in and talk. Old Lin looked at the fellows behind Archie. Finally, 
he looked at Cook, not far behind them. His face turned cold in an instant. He seemed very unhappy. Yes, come with me. After he had said this, his eyes fell on DeWitt again, and he looked and looked at Wen Jean in his arms. He seemed to think for a while before turning to lead the way. Professor Lin, said Archie, who had spent a year in the Academy of Sciences and looked around at familiar and unfamiliar scenes, feeling a little awkward, I heard that the Capital Star is not very peaceful recently and a lot of contract beasts have been poisoned. Yes, said Lin, sighing as he stepped in and saw fewer people around him. Assyrians pay little attention to beasts, but this kind of slaughter never happened. But now, not only has it happened, but the frequency is so high. It's really amazing. It's shocking. Why is that? I heard from my friends that it has lasted for a long time. Mark told him this when he first went to Liberets. It had been almost a week since they had first heard this news. Capital Star was very closely monitored. If the poison in the streets was happening with such a high frequency, the other side could become more and more rampant. Is it necessary to maintain the stability of the army regardless of it? Old Lin pushed open a glass door, sniffed and sighed, shook his head, and looked very helpless. Instead, DeWitt, who had been silent, suddenly added, the responsibility for the contract beasts should belong to the genetic survey center. As soon as this sentence was voiced out, Archie was stunned and immediately reacted. Although Cook was a very annoying person, his words at the door were just a pretext. Those poison chi beasts were always sent to the Scientific Research Institute. But if the chi beasts were the only common poisoning, how could it possibly be sent to the Institute? This was the highest dot level research site of the Empire, and it was near the military department. Every day it was carefully protected by the soldiers sent by the military department. If the poisoning of the chi beasts was brought in, it could only be explained. See for yourselves. Opening the inner door, old Lin's eyes flashed with a trace of sadness as he took them in. Just as he stepped into the room, Archie was stunned. His eyes widened sharply, and he was stunned in place. Even DeWitt could not help frowning. Subconsciously, he reached out and covered the eyes of the little fox in his arms. Although the research room was already huge, the transparent compartments in the room were still crowded. Every cubicle contained a variety of contract beasts. Some of them had broken heads and were bleeding. Some of them had open wounds everywhere, some of their limbs had been cut off, and you could even see the white bones from a distance. They had dim eyes, light breath, tired faces, confused, and painful looks that make people very distressed. There were a lot of young beast cubs among them, which were much smaller than one gene. In one cage were cubs that looked like they had just been born. But the places that were not covered by fur and should be pink were unnaturally black and purple. It's dead. Noticing DeWitt's eyes, Lynn explained, the female had just given birth, and since she can't see her children eating, she gets very agitated and bites herself all the time. Archie's eyes were fixed on the small beasts. For a moment, he could not help but pull back to the day when Kai Kai was thrown in front of him more than ten years ago. His heart seemed to be pulled by someone. It was painful. The bird crouching on his shoulder seemed to feel his mood and depression. His head, with its soft and a little hard bird feathers, rubbed against him. This is the only place we keep the beasts. Looking at the crowded room, Old Lin sighed. In fact, it's no use to keep it closed like this. Isolation and cleanliness are not in place. I am not competent enough. They all say that this matter is not under the control of the Academy of Sciences. They argue that I have taken two rooms, and my hands are tied. I can only do it here. What is this poison? Archie took a deep breath and asked in a trembling voice. His eyes were locked tightly on the wounded beasts, his heart felt painful, but he was powerless. He could only moan from his throat as his heart was filled with sadness. These were not aggressive beasts. Most of them were barely as big as a human arm. How could anyone do this to any beast? 
how could someone have such a poisonous hand? Neurotoxicity, Lin said, biting his lips. Although it's only speculation, I suspect that the source of the toxin is not simple. There were parts of the extracted ingredients that matched the Zerg poison. What? Archie stared, almost screaming. Looking at his unbelieving eyes, Old Lin nodded. Apart from DeWitt, everyone who had been infected by the Zerg poison was either dead or unconscious. Zerg poisoning was an absolute first dot class problem for the Empire. However, nowadays, some people could get certain toxins that matched a part of Zerg poison. And now that poison was being found in Chi beasts on a large scale in Asira, the capital city. What was this? An idea passed through Archie's mind in just a second, and he said in a hurry, it's possible that it's related to Zerg poisoning, but the stabilization forces don't care. What about the military headquarters? That's just my guess. We haven't completely analyzed the specific ingredients of Zerg poisoning up to now. We can't go through the process without specific books and texts. Archie was amazed. Old Lin had always been a respected professor at the Academy of Sciences. What he said, even if there was no real evidence, no one would respond to it. You can't find someone to help you. I also submitted the report on potential safety hazards, Lin said, took off his glasses and pinched the bridge of his nose tiredly. Archie realized that Lin seemed much older than the last time he had seen. But Cook rejected it. There was a moment of silence in the room. The air seemed to be filled with the painful breathing of the beasts. Archie clenched his teeth and could not say a word. The old man looked at the furnishings in the room, with a little self-reproach on his wrinkled face. It was DeWitt who looked at all the smaller beasts in the room and suddenly asked, what about the other room?